How's it going guys? Medium difficulty question for biochemistry and endocrine for step one. 43 year old woman has type two diabetes mellitus. And we know it's type two because she has an elevated BMI. She's a bit older. You can by all means get type two in pediatrics. I've seen it in a 17 year old on a 2CK peds question, but just for starters, clearly past level diagnosis of acute type two, and then medium difficulty answer choices with the up and down arrows here. So let's start with ketones on the left. We're gonna have decreased ketones in type two. Okay, ketones are only going to be increased in type one. That's exceedingly high yield for starters. The reason for that is because type one diabetes, we're gonna have absent insulin production by the pancreas, which is going to allow for full catabolism and ketone production. Okay, catabolism of fatty acids down into acetyl-CoAs, which are the building blocks for ketone synthesis, okay? In type two diabetes, Melissa, in contrast, we have insulin resistance leading to hyperinsulinemia. Now, even though we have re resistance for insulin, we still have presence of it, which is going to allow for some degree of production of malonyl CoA. It's one of the uh, substrates in the production of fatty acids, and the presence of malonyl CoA is going to inhibit the carnitine shuttle, prevents the movement of fatty acyl CoA's from the cytosol into the mitochondrion. So we do not get beta oxidation, we do not get acetyl CoA production, we do not get ketone synthesis. The point is, ketones high in type 1, they're fucking low in type 2, okay? So we're only looking at these bottom answer choices here. Now let's look at insulin. I already said we're going to have hyperinsulinemia. That's the second high yield point, all right? So we're only going to be looking at these answers here. So insulin is high because we have insulin resistance, okay? So hyperinsulinemia. USMLE loves this in terms of they can give you the same fucking question here and then just say which the following is most likely to be seen in this patient and they'll have like choice A, ketonuria, wrong fucking answer, okay? And the student's confused because they're like, oh, I thought like ketones were something we see, okay, in type 1, not in type 2. And then the answer will be hyperinsulinemia. So now we've got lipoprotein lipase versus hormone-sensitive lipase. This is more of our nitpicky biochemistry, but it's on the NBME exams. You need to know lipoprotein lipase is simply an enzyme that's going to bring fat from the blood into the adipocyte. So it's an anabolic enzyme. It's upregulated by insulin. Hormone-sensitive lipase is going to bring fat from the adipocyte into the blood. It's a catabolic enzyme. So if we have insulin resistance, decreased effect of insulin, then we're going to be favoring catabolism over anabolism, okay? So we already said we expect ketones to be low. We expect insulin to be high, and then we are going to expect a down arrow for lipoprotein lipase, up arrow for hormone-sensitive lipase, okay? So many fucking arrows in my question here, I can't even see what the correct answer is. But we expect down arrow ketones because remember that the presence of insulin, even with insulin resistance, prevents ketone production. Up arrow insulin because we have hyperinsulinemia, so the pancreas, we're going to have hypertrophy of the beta cells uh, initially. So up arrow for insulin, decrease lipoprotein lipase because this is an anabolic enzyme for fat storage. And if insulin can't do its job like it's supposed to, we're going to have decreased fat storage. Hormone sensitive lipase increase, catabolic enzyme. So this is going to release fats from the adipocyte into the blood. So if insulin can't do, a do its job, we're going to favor catabolism. USMLE also wants you to know that hormone sensitive lipase is upregulated by epinephrine. That also is on the NBME exam. You know the deal. If you make more content, if you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.